So welcome to the um, September 7th uh, Scrapbook Live. I am Megan Jacks and I have a fun layout that we're gonna be putting together from the Creative Memories blog. If you need a copy of the handout, if you're on the Facebook Live, you'll see it as a link in the comments. If you're on YouTube watching this later, there is a link to it in the description of the video. So make sure you have that handout. It is a um, from the Creative Memories blog. They have this layout using the, I think it's Jazzberry papers from the Vivid Melody collections. And I'm gonna be putting it together with something just a little bit different. Um, so um, we'll go ahead and switch over here to my tables. So you can see here, I have some 4th of July photos. And these photos are from, well, my seven-year-old was almost three. So we are talking a solid four years ago um, when Cody was just a wee little thing. And even my daughter still had her longer hair and was willing to participate in some of these fun summer activities with us. Now that they're teenagers, my older two are a little bit like, eh, I don't want to do that. But the layout, um, you can see here the sketch, it has the two horizontal photos, um, has the three, they show square photos. That was actually the first thing when um, I did this layout, what caught my attention, I will say, is I really like this detail here. Wasn't crazy about the pink, but when I saw it as a sketch, I was like, oh, I like that. I like this detail here um, in the middle. You can get kind of, um, you know, that's a great time to use the um, custom cutting system. You can see here, I've got an old star pattern from the custom cutting system. Um, the Vivid Melodies collection does come with a lot. Each one of the different color packs has a big laser cut embellishment in that embellishment pack that would really work nicely in here. So if you're working with that collection, you should have something in that embellishment pack, or you could add a photo here. You could use, you know, a lot of different ways you could um, work in this center section. You could just use another mat and kind of play around with what you're doing here. But really um, a key feature for me of this particular layout is this decorative area right here in the between the two horizontal pictures. One area I knew that was gonna be a problem for me is the square photos. As I show you here, these photos are three inch squares if you want them to fit as this layout is shown. Now, to be honest, three inch squares sometimes for me are a little rough, especially if I'm working with already pre-printed four by sixes. So I knew right away that the three, <laughs> the three inch squares were gonna be hard. Um, so I knew what I would be able to do though, just from other things I've done, I knew I could probably use a couple of vertical images here. Instead of the three squares, I could just do two vertical images and that's what I've got. So if we look at my photos, I had two horizontal photos, my husband and my son looking through their fireworks bounty to figure out what they're going to, um, to, uh, play with, I guess. The in our neighborhood they set off the fireworks in one of the cul-de-sacs. And then I had two horizontal or two vertical images. And so what I've done is I've already pre-cut these down. Now I was only able to get them to I think they're three and a half inches wide. I was not able to get all the way down to the three. Yeah, they're three and a half inches wide. And then I cut a mat for each one of these photos that is about an eighth of an inch bigger, maybe a little bit more than an eighth of an inch bigger. I wanted that thin mat that's going to have um, some contrasting color into it, but um, I needed to keep it fairly thin because I'm working with that narrow space. So when it came to my photos, uh, or excuse me, my papers, I obviously knew I wanted to work with 4th of July colors because I have 4th of July photos. And... I have all of my 4th of July papers in a red, white, and blue project folder. I mean, that's what the project folder at the top just says, red, white, and blue. I just know it's all my 4th of July papers, so I can start mixing and matching. I happen to pull everything. This is all from the, um, oh my gosh, I looked it up. I seriously went and looked up the name of it. It's from, not this last year, it was from 2021. Um, it was the... Um, I can't remember the name of the collection now. If somebody is out there and can remember the name of the collection from last year, that would be fantastic to type it in the comments. I just cannot remember. Um, but I've got this dark plaid. I was kind of inspired, you know, by the look here, even though I said I'm not a big fan of the pink. It's just not my thing. I see some comments. You guys love the pink and that's fantastic. It is really pretty. It's just not, doesn't work well with photos I generally have. But I like the plaid. I thought that was nice in a nice bold color in the back. So dark color, nice matte. It's going to frame everything lovely. So I stuck with that dark color. 
Now I needed something that was going to be a large page mat. And they used that white and kind of a bigger floral um, print pattern. I ended up using this star paper is what I'm going to cut for it. And the reason I went with the stars is I tried something that was a little bit busier and it ended up being too busy. I have, I'm going to have a lot going on in this. So I wanted a little bit more something a little calmer. And so this has a very organized pattern to it. Um, it's got, it's not super high contrast. It's not a very dark blue with the white. It's kind of more of a slight a medium blue with a slightly lighter blue works great. And then they have this lovely, just a tonal blue still carries in the stars has that, um, you know, the mid color blue that's in here that I'll be using for this six and a half inch piece that comes down the side. So those are my papers. Creative Memories does make it wonderful when you're using with the papers for the most part. I mean, this is all within one collection. It makes it pretty easy to pick and choose what you're gonna do there. I could have gone with a red if I wanted to come in here, but I kept it very tonal with the blue and I'm gonna use um, a little bit of red as the accent on my mats. So the um, when we get started with this, the, we can see right away in the directions they want us to use the base paper. We cut out an 11 inch square from the next piece up. We'll cut an 11 inch square here. And then we're gonna cut a six and a half inch by 12 inch piece out of this tonal blue. So the background is very, very easy. I mean, this whole thing is gonna come together pretty quick. I mean, we may be out of here by in another 20 minutes. But the one thing I do know is I don't need to cover this all up, right? This paper here, this large square. No, I don't need to put an 11 by 11 inch square on top of a full sheet of paper. So I'm gonna cut out the middle. And when I cut out the middle, what I'm actually gonna do after I cut it out is I'll be using this star template to cut out the shape of the star shape that I'll be using in the rest of the layout. So that's a great way. I could just cut my star out here and not worry about cutting out um, the, the back here. But I want to show you that technique. If you followed um, any of the other, um, uh, excuse me, the Power Hour classes that we've done, any of our Page Maker classes, any of the things that we've done before, we I have shown how to cut out that frame. I'm going to do it one more time for you guys here, and we're going to use the binder technique because uh, the binder clips, because I'm going to be just making four even cuts all the way around when I do this. So. I am putting an 11 by 11 inch piece on here. I'm gonna have a half inch exposed uh, piece all the way around. So in general, I then wanna come in another half an inch. So I want a full inch at minimum all the way around. But I think what I'm gonna do is, yeah, I think I'll be fine. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do a one inch frame all the way around. That's gonna give me a 10 by 10 inch square that I'm gonna be cutting out, all right? So when I do the binder with the binder clips, what I like to do here is I always turn my, my trimmer horizontal towards me so that it's, it's parallel to my table front. And now what I'm gonna do is when I cut, I would go ahead and put my paper in, line it up at the one inch at the bottom. I can close it. And now I'm gonna bring over, and you can see I have a couple things here. You might see that I have a, a strip here across the top of my cutting blade. This lines up, it's actually just a strip of sticker. So if you take a sticker sheet like this, all right, here's just a sticker sheet. And I would just come in here and cut very a very thin strip from the top or wherever from doesn't need to be very much and now i've got a thin strip of sticker that i can lay across the top right across the middle there i got this technique from diana brinsley she's one of my um the gals on the creative life scrapbooking so um this is not my technique this is diana's thing to have this across the top it's wonderful 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 because you'll see how it lines up with that line there that tells me where my cut start and stop point is. So you can use that if you don't wanna use the binder clips, if you don't have binder clips, you can just use that. You would line it up at one inch. I can see the one inch mark here. It's hard for you guys to see it from the top, but for my shot looking in here, I can see the one inch, I can line it up here. And I would come over and trim all the way to 11. 
and that would be my cut. Now, if I wanna use the binder clip, what I do is I bring my guide over to the one inch. My white line is at the one inch. I have a small binder clip. I'm gonna clip it to the outside, to the right of my cartridge housing. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the opposite side, to the 11 inch mark. Remember, I'm making a one inch frame and I will set this to the left side of my cartridge housing. Now I've got my start and my stop. Double check that you've got your paper set to one inch. And you would adjust this if you need to make, if you need to make an inch and a half frame, you can move your binder clips around. You don't have to use the binder clips. Sometimes I don't, but for this purpose, I wanted to go ahead and show you. And I'm just gonna go cut from binder clip to binder clip. And I just rotate my paper. I don't have to think about where I start and stop. Those binder clips do that work for me. Lining up at one inch. So I like the binder clip when I'm doing several of the same repeat cuts. It works fantastic. I put those binder clips in once and I can make all four cuts. Now you can see here, I've got this piece left over for scrap. I could make mats out of it. I could save it for a separate project, maybe the other side. Oh, that's really pretty. Maybe I'd wanna use that for something. I'm actually gonna cut a star out of this. Um, so um, it works great for me. So I'm gonna just set this to the side for the moment. I'm not gonna worry about cutting that star. I'm gonna put down my cutting mat. We're gonna go ahead and build the background. So I've got my 11 or my 12 inch frame here. And the next piece I'm gonna go ahead and cut is gonna be that 11 inch square. I did see a comment, somebody asking about, if I'm cutting out a 10 inch square, I'm doing it one inch in from each side. That's why I come in from an inch, now I go over 10 inches to 11 inches. So that's where I'm getting my 10 inch. So you might think, oh, you'd wanna start at, um, a, you know, you wanna start at the two position. Well, that's cutting a 10 inch square off of one corner. If you wanna center it, you're gonna come in one inch all the way around, you start at one inch, on the, um, where it says one inch, and then you cut over 10 inches to 11. So now we're gonna do an 11 inch square, and this is kind of that larger page mat. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut 11 inches, and I'm measuring over to 11 inches rather than just cutting off one inch. You can do it either way. You can cut off one inch from two sides. Gotta remove my clips. So there we go, there's my 11 inch square. While I have my trimmer, I am gonna go ahead and make my next cut. I'm gonna cut that tonal blue at six and a half inches. So that's step two. We've kind of done step one. We've got the paper cut, we got the background, we've got the 11 by 11 inch square. And now we're gonna go ahead and cut that six and a half by 12. So six and a half, there's my six, come over to six and a half. This is the top edge of my paper, six and a half. So this blue is scrap. So there you can see the dry fit of it going together is about how it looks. So there, I mean, that's a pretty simple layout right there. So now it's adhering pieces together. So I'm actually gonna use, nope, I'm gonna use my regular adhesive. I forgot to refill my mini adhesive. I try to use my mini adhesive sometimes when I'm doing these frames, especially if I don't have a lot of overlap. You may have cut it closer to an inch and a half in, that would give you a full inch overlap. Maybe you didn't cut it at all, that works too. I get a little frugal with my designer paper, especially the tonals, these dark tonal colors. Just love having 
those available to use for other projects or the really pretty, um, the really pretty design or uh, design statement prints. And I'm trying to center. I feel like this bottom corner is maybe not as over where I'd like. There we go. All right. So there you can see there's the back side. You can see I have that big cutout. And there's this. This next piece is going to go on just as normal. Um, now, if I really wanted to be frugal, I could come in here maybe with a couple of circles and make just a couple of small circle cutouts if I wanted to. If I thought, oh, I think I could use this star paper for something else. Or if I would wanted this tonal red off the back, I could do that. Um, that's starting to get, if I wasn't doing it on camera, maybe I would do it. Um, it, it's, it's so easy just to grab the custom cutting system pieces and cut yourself out some shapes from the middle. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about that, that, but if that's something you want to do, definitely consider doing that. I'm just going to go ahead and stick this down. And we're going to come in about an inch from the right side. We want to see this dark blue. We want to see this, um, the, the mat, the large page mat there. So let me line this up on my cutting guide or my mat. And I'm going to come over to the one inch. The cutting mat just makes it so easy to line things up. All right, there we go. All right, so then these photos are going to come in here as such. Now, they had these photos all just narrowed in here perfect. Mine are probably going to overlap a little bit. I probably could make an adjustment. I might need to slide this paper over just a smidge. I want to give a little bit more room, so I'm going to cheat it over. I also could have cut this piece to a little bit wider. I could have come out maybe to 11 and a half and given myself a little more space. So instead of lining it up at one inch, I'm gonna line it up at three quarters of an inch. Have a little bit of this, that background paper still showing through. This is just little adjustments. My, cause my photos are a little bit wider. Remember I said that I couldn't get these down to three inches. This one I could have, the problem was is this one here um, really probably would have need to cut it, uh, to reprint it, to get it down to that smaller. I didn't want to cut all of my husband off here. So I just took it down to the three and a half. I'm going to go ahead and put my photos on here so that they're not flopping around. My mats are cut just a little bit bigger. I'm using the firecracker shimmer, a little bit of red not too much. It's more all about the blues. Fireworks were legal in my, they're, they're legal in Washington. They can be, um, uh, ruled out in some, some counties and some areas. So now they're not illegal, but they used to be legal. And I mean, it was crazy. It was insane. The amount of fireworks that they put off. So you can kind of see, maybe they'll overlap a little as such. We are covering up quite a bit of that background paper. Now, I do, let me show, where are my photos? Here they are. This photo will come in as such. This photo is gonna come in across the top, all right? So now I've got this area here and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut a star out of my, this, blue plaid paper. I've got that extra piece. So this is where you can start to get a little, you know, creative with what you want to do. If you've got a big embellishment piece that can go in here, maybe you've got um, a circle. Like I could have cut a circle out of this star paper that I used and have that big red circle here in the middle. Um, there's lots of ways that you could do this. Maybe you got a thin mat. Maybe you have just a couple of photos. I mean, this overall background, if you look at just this background that we've got, it's just a great layout here for some different ways to do your photos. So I like how these four by sixes love it when I can just put a four by six on the page. Don't have to crop anything. It is good to go. And then we'll have these photos, but I am going to use this plaid paper and cut 
with the star, I'm gonna go ahead and cut. And now here's the other thing. Remember, I am covering up a good portion of the star. I'm gonna tilt it ever so slightly on my page. So I'm actually gonna come down and cut that star from kind of this bottom. Imagine that's, I'm pretty certain it's gonna be about such. So I'm not gonna cut out my entire star. That'll leave extra bits here that I could use for another project. So I've got my red blade on my star on that outside track. I'm gonna start on the outside or in the middle of the paper rather than trying to start from the edge and come in. I find that seems to work a little bit better. When you're using your um, the custom cutting system, if you have the old circular blades that they're they're literally just round like this, they're not the hexagon. That more than likely means you don't have um, the swivel. These hexagon ones they swivel, which makes doing these templates so easy. So if your blades do not swivel, you, that might be a great upgrade for you to do. The other thing to make sure as you get both of these pins, you can see those pins right there, you wanna make sure you get those settled right in the track. If you start moving this and your blade is tearing, it more than likely means you don't have both pins in the, in the track. So take the time to make sure you get both pins in there before you start moving it. Every once in a while, I'll see comments from people that are not sure why those, why are their blades tearing? They're brand new blades and they're tearing. Well, more than likely it's because you didn't get both pins in there. Or if it is as brand new, when it comes from Creative Memories, it will have a protective cover on the blade. You need to make sure that little piece of cardboard is pulled off, put both blades in the track and you'll be good to go, both pins. So there we go. Now we have a star. All set to go. Okay. The other thing that I had to think about here, I'm gonna just quickly talk about this. I had to think about which photo was gonna be on top versus the bottom, because I can switch either one of these around. And I, I, I made my choice. So initially I was gonna do this. I was gonna put the photos like this, something along these lines. Then I started figuring out, oh, my stickers. Well, let me put my stickers on here. Well, then I started realizing I was kind of nestling my stickers down here along this line. Well, then I'm covering my husband's head up. Well, that's not great. And here I'm starting to cover up the back of my husband. Well, I mean, it's great. My daughter's out here and we have some of our neighbors, but I really wanted to be able to see that, you know, my husband and was somewhat supervising the occasion. So then I switched them around. I don't mind this, this little bit of bag gets covered up. It's just kind of one of those things I wish I'd been paying a little bit more attention to where I was taking pictures. I could have cleaned up the trash a little bit, maybe the plastic bag that he had all of this stuff in that plastic bag. But once we, you know, could have pulled the plastic bag out, there's an empty, Cody had eaten some chips. I could have, you know, pulled the trash off the ground, that kind of stuff. You know, after you've taken the photos, you realize, oh, if I had just taken a couple of seconds to clean the scene, but you can see now if I wanna put stickers and such on here, and I have some stickers I've kind of picked out, I can have them here at the bottom and it's okay if they start to cover up this top portion of this photo. And I still have to work on figuring out how I'm gonna do, I've got some firecrackers that I punched from the firecracker punch that we have. I've got, I punched about as a medium, excuse me, it's at a light blue white shimmer and firecracker shimmer. But I think they're gonna go in something along these lines. Yeah, and there is a great point here um, uh, that somebody made a comment that's nice too is, since my husband is looking down and both boy, my husband and my son are looking down this way with their, at the top of the photo, they're still looking down into the layout and here they're kind of looking up towards the layout. That is definitely a great point. Um, whenever you're trying to organize your photos, if you can think of the Brady Bunch, everybody just looks in towards the middle or up at each other down. They don't look out. You never saw the Brady's looking off to the side. They're always looking at each other. And so kind of keep that in mind when you're arranging your photos. If you can, always keep 
them looking into the layout. So if you have a two page layout, they can kind of look in towards the middle here, but a single page, ideally everybody's gonna be looking in if possible. Sometimes it doesn't work, but sometimes if you can do that, it will work great. So I am not 100% sure that I'm gonna leave these firecrackers in there. I've got some other stuff here. Um, I've got other stickers. Actually, I wasn't going to. I think when I was playing around with it, I was gonna use these stars. Nope, I'm using these firecrackers. I had to remember. I have these two firecrackers. I think, I don't know that I'm gonna use the firecracker punch. I might do something down here with them, but I think I'm coming in with these in here. Once again, this is like these details that I still have to kind of work out. I don't wanna put them on, I don't want them to get stuck, but they're gonna come in like this and I think what I'm gonna do is I am gonna use my silver uh, tip journal pen and I'm gonna come around with some stitching here. I don't know that I'll carry the stitching out to the outside, but I wanna do something to just accentuate the shape of the star a little bit. So um, I'm gonna do that. And I've already got, I'm gonna stick these down in just a little bit, probably off camera because um, I need to kind of do those details and I really don't think you guys want to sit here and uh, watch me do stitching on the outside edge. I do not have any tips for that. I wish I did. Um, I have been blessed with a fairly steady hand when it comes to doing the stitching uh, technique, you know, around the outside edge. Now, if I do it on camera, I'll totally mess it up. So I probably will wait. But um, in general, it's just the, the tip end and I just use a fairly light, um, a light touch to it. You can practice. I have, I find that I'm, I'm right-handed. I find working from the top down. So I'm basically doing those um, marks towards myself is always the best way to do it. I don't go super fast. I do take my time, try to stay even to the outside edge, um, in terms of doing the stitching that may or may not be a technique that you want to do depends on your, um, options. Some people will just ink the outside edge. I could come and I could cut um, with the green blade on the outside on, the, on that mat and give myself another outline. I tried that as I was kind of sampling it. And the one thing about this star is it starts to get even more rounded the further out you go. It's not because of the custom cutting system. It's not like a true point. And so I wanted to go ahead and not worry about that rounded. As it got more and more rounded, I wanted to keep it um, not feeling so rounded. So that's pretty much how it's gonna come together. I'm gonna do that in these, those details here. So I will get that all taken care of, posted to, the, um, to the, uh, my page. I've gotta figure out here whether I'm gonna maybe overlap these a little bit. Um, if I go like this, you can see, I've got um, some space here. I could overlap. Oh, you guys have a little bit of glare with the, the light that I've got. Um, or I could keep it as such. And what I could do is, I think what I'm gonna actually do is, and I'll come in here with a sticker at the bottom and put the year. So um, I've got the, uh, that type of thing going on. So, um, I, somebody's asking if I, about these, um, are these events, this scrapbook live, I do the scrapbook live every Wednesday at 10 AM. So I hope that, um, next Wednesday at 10 AM, I'll have another project for us to do. I don't know what that project's going to be yet. Um, I've got some bookmarked that I think they're from the creative memories blog. And always just find a layout that um, has a sketch that accompanies it, uh, because um, the nice thing about the sketches, as I mentioned before, when we look at this layout, when I first saw the blog post, I said, oh, that's pretty. It's really pretty. It's a lot of pink. And of course it could be done in other colors, but in my mind, it was just, I was having a hard time visualizing it. And then when they do the sketch roundups on Sunday, every once in a while, Creative Memories will have on their blog, the sketch roundups. I saw the sketch for this layout and I said, oh, I really like that. I love that detail. You could do all sorts of things here. I really did thought about doing a, like kind of a first day of school or a back to school, um, layout because I was going to use the heart, um, out of the custom cutting system, if I can find it here. It's the heart 
from the gemstone and I was gonna make it an apple. And I thought that would be so cute. Just like a little apple that sticks out here, has a little stem, and it could be a back to school layout with the new back to school collection. Well, I didn't have any photos that were gonna work for it. And there was no way even this morning I was gonna be able to take those photos quick enough, get them printed to be able to use for a 10 o'clock class. So I literally dropped my kid off at, his school starts at 9.15. So we got him out the door, got him to school. I came home got ready for this. And here we are, a lovely 4th of July layout. So I will add those additional details there and um, get everything posted so you guys can see the results. I mean, this, like I said, um, adding the embellishments and the stickers is always a little bit of a hemming and hawing situation for me. Uh, now that I've got my photos on here, I can um, just visualize things a little bit better and um, kind of play around with what I'm gonna do. But these are the stickers from the, um, the current collection, uh, the, which is called Stars and Spirit. I'm using the Stars and Spirit paper or stickers with the, um, uh, the collection from the 2021 um, red, white, and blue collection. So, all right, that is a pretty much, today's layout. So like I said, I'll get it put together. Um, and yeah, cause it might take me another 20 minutes <laughs> to put all the, put the embellishments on just the way I want them. Right. And that's kind of my, uh, uh just, just how I am. So, um, we will do this again next week. Um, but hopefully you've had a chance. It's a little bit of a warm up. This is the virtual crop. It's a worldwide virtual crop for creative memories is coming up. That starts tomorrow at, um, I think it's 6 PM central. Um, I think so. I might be off on the time. Um, I should have looked that up to know, tell you for sure, but it's going to be 12 layouts that are going to be shared 12 sketches on the creative memories blog. And they'll show that, share those every four hours. So yeah, it starts because it starts tomorrow. It's 3 PM Pacific time. So that's five central six Eastern, right? I'm pretty certain. Um, it's yeah, I think I have the times right. <laughs> so, um, those there'll be 12 of them and I will sh be sharing those sketch measurements on my Facebook page. So make sure that you have follow my Facebook page. They'll be on there. And if you are not on Facebook for those who are catching this on the recording later, um, I'll have them on my blog as well. So uh, that's meganjax.com and they'll be out there. So you guys can, um, as I say, cut with confidence, um, it's always a little scary sometimes cutting your pretty paper when you are working with a sketch. So sometimes those measurements can be a great place to start. Um, but the advice I always give to people when you're working with sketches is let the sketch inspire you, let it start your, um, your creation. But if you go off the rails with it, if it, your pictures take you in a whole different direction, that's okay. That is perfectly okay. The goal with any sketch is to get a finished layout, right? That's really what you want. You just want to have a finished layout. So if you're like, I love this sketch and I got started with it, but now it looks nothing like it, but you've got a page you love, fantastic. Sketches can be used over and over. So maybe you'll try it again with another set of photos or another collection. You realize, oh, I was able to stick more to the sketch. It worked a little bit better. My photos fell into that sketch a little bit easier than the other photos I was trying to work with. So um, we will see what the sketches are. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them. And uh, the, like I said, every four hours, they will actually go all night long because this is worldwide. So Australia and Japan participate as well. So when you get up on Friday morning, there's going to be two or three sketches that were shared overnight. And the same thing Saturday morning, there'll be some sketches shared overnight. I do not post measurements when they're being posted in the middle of the night. You'll get them in the morning <laughs> when I wake up. So um, the other, only other thing I really want to mention, oh, there's two more things, I guess. And I realize um, I want to mention that there's free shipping goes for a couple more days on Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific is the free shipping with Creative Memories. If you're ordering through Creative Memories website, please make sure to, I just turned off the lights on my, uh, my foot hit my power strip. So I just turned off my lights. Um, it, make sure that you are ordering with an advisor and that you are um, supporting an advisor. So you, I'm more than welcome to shop with me, but please make sure you are supporting an advisor when you're shopping with Creative Memories. Um, and 
lastly, power hours coming up. So that is the monthly um, virtual make and take that I do with Tessa. We're going to do two layouts in half an hour. Tessa does a layout. I do a layout about a half hour each. And that's coming up on September 13th. That's next Tuesday. So you can go to meganandtessa.com. If you've never done that before and you want to give it a shot, we would love to have you join us. Um, once you go to, uh, meganandtessa.com, you'll see the spot where you can register for power hour. It is free sign up, join us. It's a great time. We do record it. We record everything. So you can always catch it on YouTube later. You can see our past power hours. If you'd like to see what we've done in the past and the handouts are all available on our website, the new power hour layout, um, the handouts will go out on Monday, probably early afternoon. Um, Pacific time. I don't know. It's hard to say. Tessa will refer to afternoon. It's still my morning. So it'll go out sometime on Monday and you'll have those for Tuesday night's class. So, all right. Um, I just see a comment asking about, can you order multiple times with free shipping? Yes, you can. So if you have seen something recently, like, oh, I forgot something. You can still use free shipping multiple times. I definitely have. Um, to grab things. So you might want to grab your Croptoberfest because there's Croptoberfest classes coming up. We have all the new collections that came out. There will be new product next week, but free shipping ends on Friday. So this would be if, if you're ordering and you know there's things you want, go ahead and grab them now um, for the free shipping. Um, I have no idea what's coming next week. Um, I know eight by eights are coming. Um, I, the eight by eight albums are coming out. Last year, we had a sticker buffet, the alphabet sticker buffet. So we could see something along those lines. I don't know for sure though. So um, we will have to just wait and see what happens. Um, I forgot to do a scrappy update this week. So I feel like I'm kind of tailoring that in here at the end of the scrapbook live, giving you kind of those little bit of updates for the week. Um, and I think that's truly it. We will see Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, I will have whatever new products creative memory is releasing for mid September. I will know all that information on Friday at 10 AM Pacific free shipping ends Friday at 10 AM Pacific. So, um, you know, feel your card up, see where you are, decide what you want to do. All right. So everybody take care. Cannot wait to see what you guys create from this. Please share it. If you do, I'm looking forward to see what everybody does with the virtual crop. Um, I'm excited because it's the first virtual crop. I'm going to be home all weekend. I don't have a conflict. I think every virtual crop since April or May, I've had a conflict that weekend. So this one, nope, I do not. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not fixing anyone, any food. You're all on your own. I am scrapbooking the entire weekend. So that'll be fun. All right, everybody take care. I will see you guys next week. Remember next Wednesday at 10 a.m. We'll be doing this again. And um, everybody have a great weekend. Thanks for watching.